Gretz rose from his knees and trudged back through the bushes into the park onto the tree-lined walk. He tried to find his suitcase but couldn't. Then he returned to the main street, empty and illuminated only by the moon. It was already past one in the morning when he stopped in front of the welcomingly open door of the administration library. The library windows were hung with heavy curtains, but inside it was as bright as day. The dried-out wood floor creaked ferociously, but there were books all around. The shelves were groaning with books. Books were piled on the tables and in the corners, and other than Perrette's and the books, there wasn't a soul in the library. Perrette sank into a large old armchair, stretched his legs, leaned back, and quietly put his arms on the armrests. Don't just stand there, he told the books. Slackers, is that what you were written for? Go on, report to me. How's the sewing progressing? How much have you sewn? How much that's good, kind, eternal? And what are the prospects for the harvest? And most important, what has already sprouted? You're quiet. Take you, what do I call you? Yes, you, the two-volume tome. How many people have read you? And how many have understood you? I really love you, old thing. You're a kind and honest friend. You've never yelled, never bragged, never beat your chest. Yes, you're kind and honest. And those who read you also become kind and honest. Even if only for a time. Even if only with themselves. You look fine. You look like you weathered that. Oh, yeah, I got over COVID a few days ago. Um, I feel okay. Yeah. Did Maybe you... a little brain fog. It was cool to have... I noticed, like, you have a pride when you don't get it a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. I was interested that when you get it, you also have a pride. You're like, <laughs> you know, I, I have now had the mysterious guest. Or whatever. Yeah, and it's also like you get through it and you're okay and you feel a sort of yeah. you know. of humanity or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did feel like very special that I didn't have it. I was kind of like, oh, wow. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And I was like, and I thought I was going to be able to evade it. And I just... Yeah. Yeah, I just basically had what felt like a cold. I had a fever for a couple of days, and then I just had a cold, what felt like kind of a bad yeah. for a while. Oh, yeah. The cold lasted about a week after I tested. Okay. Finally, I still had this cold for about... Yeah. Did you have a cough or anything like that? I didn't really have a cough. No, did I. Francis I, did. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, I was worried about the neurological thing that I have. You know, that neurological thing that affects my feet and legs and stuff like that? I oh, I didn't realize that was neurological. Neurological. I didn't know. That. I knew that. Just you, I knew you had that. Pain it's, it's neuromuscular, so it's like. It, okay. It, wow. Well, yeah. So oh, that is scary. And yeah. Virus is going to your brain. So I was just like, uh, yeah. It didn't seem to make it worse or anything. Yeah, the whole brain thing is wild. I, I, I didn't. I don't know. I mean, it, I, marijuana blocks it in some ways. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Really? But uh, look at this. You see, I have a scar here. I don't know if you can see, but uh, yeah. that was because I had this weird boil coming, like an infection. And the guy was taking it out and he's like, I can't do any more because that is the most, I'm going to have to always leave this a little bit there because it's the most dangerous spot. Like anyone who's skin guy sees your face, right? This spot, they blanch because uh, it's, att it's attached to the labyrinthine nerve which is a cool name well, which goes straight to the brain and apparently like an infection there if it gets loose will go straight to your brain you like, have brain damage oh, from like fucking crazy so they're like don't touch that shit here right here yeah That's there's a vein that goes like right into your jaw from your brain i guess jesus Christ. <laughs> so violent the labyrinthine Wow. Reminds me of that Norm MacDonald joke where he's like, my heart attacked me. <laughs> the heart attack. It's like so violent. Well, have you ever seen that Richard Pryor thing about the heart attack? He has the heart attack. 
He does the whole thing with the heart. Forgot. The heart just, he's walking along, just like having a good time. Oh, really? The heart's just like, the heart goes like, stop, motherfucker, stop. Let's just, Jesus. The heart keeps going, get on the ground. I said, get on oh, the ground, shit. motherfucker. And it's like the heart, he's just like fighting the heart. It's really classic. I can't believe Norm stole that joke. No, well, not really. I started reading Norm's, um... oh, his book. Yeah, because I had it. It's good. Years. I couldn't find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Clara found it. Clara says hi, by the way. Clara found it and then brought it over here and I started reading it. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's yeah. amazing. It's hilarious, right? You it's really hilarious. laugh. But, it's yeah. really well written. And it's really... Yeah. Weird. And it's... <laughs> it's it's super swifty in her something. Something. It's really like... And it gets really dark, but you're like, is he yeah. kidding? Is he like... It's really... <laughs> it's really... It's really good. It's really, really good. Norm. Yeah, I'm sure. I think he really enjoyed it. He probably would have written a lot more, but... Uh... Weird. It was untimely ripped. Something about I was thinking about about fucking COVID. Now I can't remember. No, I don't. Oh, COVID. Yeah, I I did find it hard to read. I I read one short story every day. I was able to pull off on of these. See, I actually was able this, to read this every monster. <laughs> I don't even like them. Damn it! I'm just stuck in there. They're weird. I'd like the short stories or the or the. Yeah, I like the novels better. Uh, the short stories are, I don't know, we, I still, I'm stuck and I can't stop reading, but I, I'm not, I'm not proud of myself. She's just one of those writers where it's like, I don't know, it's so strange. It's like you're getting almost this like naked picture of her weird mind in this way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost too intimate. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Like, it makes me a little, it's like Ian Fleming or something where you're just like, I'm a little yeah. uncomfortable with how much I'm seeing yeah. your weird. And she's habits. a little too into her character whimsy. Like she adores describing his weird eyelids and his, I don't know. Oh, like, yeah. oh that reminds me. Wait a minute. I was going to tell you something that's going to absolutely, it was hilarious when this happened. I kept meaning to tell you this. I went to go, I got new glasses like a few months ago, beginning of the year or something like that. And so I went to this um, optometrist, optician, optometrist guy or whatever. I can, I don't know the difference, but he was an optometrist. <laughs> no, he was, he was an optometrist and he had an optician's thing to make the glasses. I think that's right. And so anyway, I went to this guy and he was checking my eyes out, you know, doing the whole thing. And he was just getting my, to get my prescription down and everything. And he goes, I couldn't believe this, dude. He goes, great, so your eyes look really good and everything's fine. Um, what about that eyelid? Does that bother you? And I said, what eyelid? He goes, the droopy, the droopy eyelid that you had. And I go, I don't have a droopy eyelid. He goes, he goes what do you do? One of your eyelids is slightly droopy. And I was like, that's not true. But then he showed me, and I do in fact have one eyelid that's slightly droopy. I'm not surprised. <laughs> it's this one. It's it's your right eye. Yeah, I, I think it's my right eye. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. It's slightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was. Just, I mean, I don't know why you're telling me this. Is I... so hilarious. <laughs> guy said Supposedly, it to me. I have a true. The guy said it to me, and I just was like, "Who the fuck?" And did he say? Did, did he ask you if you want to fix it? Is like, <laughs> I, he did. Because they always have. Since I've been. I swear to God, it's one of my earliest memories of, of a doctor. Like, would you like us to fix your eyelid? And I'm like, but I see fine, you know. I don't want to. Well, I think eye, he, you know? he no. might have said he might have gone on to say that if I'd said it, it gave me a problem. But I was just, I at first I was just like, I was swear to God, I was like, so somebody told you to say this. I was like, this has got to be a That's hilarious. I was like, just thought of the fuck. Just a droopy eyelid. I was like, I don't have a droopy eyelid. This is like the fucking. But actually, if you do look, I do have a slightly drooping eye. You actually do have one, yeah. <laughs> it's much worse than my own version. No, no, it's not. But I just was like, that's fucking crazy. Crazy. And I never really noticed. And then I was like, I, I wonder if it's always been like that. I don't know. I guess it probably has. And I just haven't really... Kind of had googly eyes, you know what I mean? You have like... But I was like, I have... You have like round eyes. Yeah, yeah, I don't really I notice have your... Eye eyes. Eyes. Yeah. I don't have a fucking... Yeah, eye. exactly. The eyelid. That's what I was... It's anything. I'm not saying like if you were, you know... <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I have like weird fucking ping pong ball eyes. No. Crazy thing. Well, your dad had these like dark circles under his eyes. Remember, I... like he had these... 
I you a little bit have your dad's eyes too. I have those. I have those too. Sam has that too, and yeah. I think that's just. I think yeah. that's Mediterranean. That's Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's a lot of like Mediterranean men have that thing. I mean, but I don't you guys it. also have a bit of South Pacific Islander DNA or something? Turns out it's not true. true. I can't believe I'm going oh, to this to you, but it turns out it's probably not true. Which Sam said to me when we Typical. first got the results, Sam was like, "No, these are bullshit," and he had some whole probably totally right and correct thing that shot it all down. And then I went back, because Clara said you can go back onto 23andMe and they'll have updated stuff. That's the thing, because they every time they get new DNA, it changes what they think. Yeah, so uh, it had been redone and uh, the South Sea Islander was <laughs> <laughs> but I still know, still know Jewish, which I still am amazed, and way more Scandinavian than I thought I had in me. Like Interesting. Norwegian, yeah. I think Swedish and stuff like that, which is weird because I'm I Swedish. Know, I have Swedes. Yeah, I do. Weird. That is weird. Way more like Germanic, Dutch. I, well, you have a marauding side of you. <laughs> like, uh, I, I remember when we took judo in sixth grade, or yeah. Yeah. you were like a total fucking Viking. Why was I so? You didn't funny? use. You didn't use any of the moves of Mr. Huang taught, taught yet you always won every time. I modified them. I kind of modified yeah, them. <laughs> you <laughs> used the name. But then you well, I remember doing that, that forward roll that he had us do. I oh, would yeah. use my arm. I would just flip. I would just flip myself into a roll because I was like, I, I think I remember that. Why was I so fucking violent? I don't know. You had a lot of energy. I don't know. I had a lot of energy. I still have a lot of energy, but yeah like the most cowardly like i'm so not violent i remember actually that's true when, when the violent streak sort of ended in judo class was when we had to fight the other class that he brought in oh yeah older kid like beat the shit out of me and literally okay it, it worked it was a life-changing moment i can remember that's like when lou archer beats up some kid there's some famous <laughs> scene where he's like don't become like me kid it was. It was. Yeah. He like taught me a lesson. I can remember hitting the mat so hard my teeth rattled together. Like, wow. Yeah. I remember just thinking, I don't want to actually do this anymore. In this same class we took together, the, the teacher, Mr. Juan, used me as his example. Do you remember that? Like I always like like, all right, we're gonna teach you guys how to flip someone. Mark, come here. And he'd be like, why am, why am, why am you do that? And so to this day, man, I fall down, knock on wood, and I always do the judo block. My head is always safe. I am it's so built into me to fall without getting hurt. It's incredible, you know? That's true. And I really think it saved my ass or my that's head. That's actually it true. It saved a lot. Yes, that's actually I true. love that class. That was so yeah, good. It was I good. learned so much from that class. That's true, actually. That guy was, he was amazing. And his whole like, sort of like, the ki thing and the like, the yelling and the, the, the strength, the kind of yeah. psychic strength thing was like yeah. really important and this like really cool. Yeah. I wonder and he really taught you to use the enemy's energy, you yeah. know, and just become one with that, you know? Uh, he, he was, was really well uh, done. In Su Huang, and he was t remember he was yeah. like, really hard on his own. His kid, his kid was in the class, and he was just like, uh, <laughs> I don't remember that. It's <laughs> so hard. I remember. Wasn't his office like right by? Well, whatever. I remember where Payne Whitney gym, wasn't it? It was in the Payne yeah, 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 it was in. The and I think he had, and I remember we had to go buy our uniforms from some. Yeah. So it was buddy. like a Woody Allen movie or something. <laughs> <laughs> was some, some buddy of his who had like a market somewhere. Like, yeah. Yeah. And so we had to go buy the them. smell of those, yes. those suits was so intense. Yes. Super yeah. thick. Super yeah. thick. And did yeah. we find one like, was it like a proper like judo room? Was it like a tatami? It must have been, because I mean, I, I was flipped hundreds of times on the mat. <laughs> Dude, that is so hilarious that he used you every time is really funny. That's fucking hilarious. And then years later, you went to Korea. You were in Korea, because he was Korean, I think. Yeah, he was Korean. And he, I remember, because he taught me how to write my name in Korean. And I still remember, but then I, I did that to a Korean friend. They're like, this has nothing to do with your name. <laughs> I don't know. You, you really remembered still how to write your name in Korean? Yeah, I kind of did, yeah. 
that's really funny and it had well, like he, um, he was probably calling you like lame cow or something like exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> it was just probably totally <laughs> insulting <laughs> no my number one assistant but uh yeah i went there it was i i, I really enjoyed it it was, uh, did you see that movie burning Korean version. Did you say movie Parasite? Yeah. It came out like a year before Parasite, which I liked Parasite, but I wasn't as crazy about it as like. Yeah, well, I, I, um, I, I agree. I like a bit over. I mean, it just was overhyped, but kind of. Yeah, it was still great. Maybe. I mean, it reminded me of that Jack Vance book so so much uh, that no one ever talks about. Bad Ronald. Bad Ronald. Yeah, yeah. it's like Bad Ronald. Bad Ronald lives in a house yeah. secretly while another family's. In the house yeah, that's house. true. Actually, it was Bad you Ronald. Know? I wonder if he was, yeah. that guy was influenced at all by Bad. I could imagine that guy being because that was a famous TV movie in the seventies. Yeah, you know, very like legendary sort of TV movie. But nobody really realizes that Jack Vance wrote the book. It's I, really I could good completely and see that guy. Uh, I haven't seen it. No, but you should see this movie Burning, which came out a year yeah, okay. ago, and it's it's kind of similar. It's I'll a rent it next it's much weirder. It's really weird. And it's it's longer and slower, but it's cool. It's really I thought it was There's crazy. this one about a monster in the river. Have you seen that one? It was from a little older. From a while ago. Like 2000, uh, yeah, like 2005 or something. It's like the host? The yes. Host. Yeah, yes. that's great. Yeah. That's that guy, isn't it though? Isn't it isn't that the parasite guy? Is it the same guy? That was incredible. I think it might be his first movie. That I, but uh, I the thing like is I didn't realize just, I saw it on TV in German and I didn't realize it was old. I thought it might be recent. Yeah. And, and me and my wife were both saying to each other, this is too, you know, this is fun, but it's too much of an obvious allegory of COVID. It's just too obvious, you know. And it was from before COVID. It's from like, it's from like, <laughs> like 1998 yeah. or something. Yeah, exactly. It is weird how everything now seems like this kind of hammy, yeah, yeah. hammy like, yeah. I can't read anything. But dude, it's just too insane how, how, Epically, this has changed everything. It's just too fucking crazy to realize. It, how well, it's so we're in such a new era. Yeah, I mean, totally. also the heat thing now. So, um, oh, my God. oh my God, you know, I had to say, man, when I was reading this is out there, <laughs> when I was reading that Strugatsky book, which was from like 66, so it's you know, Soviet Union, I, I don't know what you um. Anyway, 60 something, but I was like, this reminds me, I have to say, because there's a forest. It's yeah. like an yeah. alien forest. Yeah. And, um, That's and it's more about that book. It's kind of well done, but it's so much like to me, because I had recently read two early Ballard books, mm -hmm. which are earlier, which are the Don't, the Doom, I mean, the, um, what's it called, this? The Crystal World and the Drowned World. Mm hmm. But they're really early and they're so much like that. I think, you know what? In the six weeks since Riggs' departure, he'd lived almost alone in his penthouse suite at the hotel, immersing himself more and more deeply in the silent world of the surrounding jungle. And the continued increase in temperature, the thermo alarm on the balcony now registered a noon high of 130 degrees, and the enervating humidity made it almost impossible to leave the hotel after 10 o'clock in the morning. The lagoons in the jungle were filled with fire until four o'clock, by when he was usually too tired to do anything but return to bed. All day he sat by the shuttered windows of the suite, listening from the shadows to the shifting movement of the mesh cage as it expanded and contracted in the heat. Already many of the buildings around the lagoon had disappeared beneath the proliferating vegetation. Huge clubhouses and calamites blotted out the white rectangular faces shading the lizards in their window layers. Beyond the lagoon, the endless tides of silt had begun to accumulate in enormous glittering banks. Here and there, over top of the shoreline, like the immense tippings of some distant gold mine. The light drummed against his brain, bathing the submerged level below his consciousness, carrying him downwards into warm, pellucid depths where the nominal reality of time and space ceased to exist. 
Guided by his dreams, he was moving backwards through the emergent pass, through a succession of ever stranger landscapes centered upon the lagoon, each of which, as Botkin had said, seemed to represent one of his own spinal levels. At times the circle of water was spectral and vibrant, at others slack and murky. The shore apparently formed of shale, like the dull metallic skin of a reptile. Yet again the soft beaches would glow invitingly with a glossy carmine sheen, the sky warm and limpid, the emptiness of the long stretches of sand, total and absolute, filling him with an exquisite and tender anguish. He longed for this descent through archaeopsychic time to reach its conclusion, repressing the knowledge that when it did, the external world around him would have become alien and unbearable. Like, there's some, there can be something annoying about his smart-ass yeah. stuff or whatever, but yeah. it is so ahead of its time and it's so influential. I think, like, I think it's way more important or whatever. I don't know. He just no, I agree. Everything well, so everything much. comes out of that. A lot no, of new yeah. stuff comes more than people give him credit for. I think so. In some weird way, he's. I was just reading about how, like, on the M5 or whatever, that like a highway that goes out of London and goes like to Heathrow and all that sure. stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was like really obsessed with. He was kind of always writing weird shit about that. I always think of him on those weird English areas. Like, these crazy fires along the M5, and I was like, it's oh, just that's cool. where the fires are. There's okay. these fires a lot, and I was like, it's that's so Ballard. J. G. Ballard. I was like, it's completely yes. J. G. Ballard. Yeah. I, I read The Drowned World, which I thought was really, I actually thought that was really cool, that book. Because I really like cool. that. The British do that in fiction where it's super concrete and super, like, it's super detailed. Cement or something. Yeah. <laughs> really, like, you're just like, this is actually happened. It's like H.G. Yeah, Wells. It's almost like William Golding or something. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, or H.G. Wells or that John Wyndham guy. Yeah. I really like. Yeah. And, but, um, Oh, the book of his that I, I think he was like insanely ahead of his time, the environmental shit. Like, I mean, it's so now, I mean, it, but also that, those, those Dugatsi books, I, I, I was like, wow. That's that true, actually. There's a lot of like, weird and environmental and shit in there, yeah. too, where like the yeah. environment's like. And oh. in his stuff, you there is this kind of not knowing also. It's, yeah. it's not always like. In it's true, it's not explained. There's yeah. one of his books that I really like that apparently, I think it was his first book and he like disowned it. And it's called The Wind From Nowhere. And it's about, it's about these insane, the wind, uh, planet yeah. the wind start increasing and increasing and increasing. Yeah. And they get, and people have to start living That's in great. Yeah. it's just, but there's no explanation for it. And it's like, but it's yeah. really fucking freaky. And like, it's I yeah. amazing actually. I don't know yeah, why. His environmental, um, prophecies are yeah i mean it's also very that book was super conrad and the, the uh, drowned world it was yeah. so conrad yeah. so and that's what i mean that's nice that's for you because like, you love conrad it connects the really conrad concrete, to fiction, so the really clear, concrete so. details of everything yeah. and the really like the fan boats yeah. like described yeah. like, like even that crazy the high rise one the one about the huge building with all the people, yeah high rise yeah yeah, yeah, but yeah like sort of isolated in the yeah stuff. yeah and even the car one, where everybody's like fucking in the cars and fucking the car, yeah. and everything. It's like they they make a lot of sense now, and it's like I know. It's and like, then his short stories are really like those are the best of his writing. They're so good. They kind of are the best because it's like yeah, they just are like you know, Sam. Is yeah, and they're a little more fun. Sam got really into him. Sam like oh nice. Sent you this crazy. Sam wrote this amazing paper that he sent me about Cronenberg and David Lynch and about humor in Cronenberg and David Lynch. Wow. Great fucking paper. Nice. It's really like, yeah. I had to write about Cronenberg once. On, I wrote about his novel. Remember that came out? That that I reviewed cool. the novel. I think it was, was good. good. Yeah. What's we both thought it was good. Yeah. yeah. It was and like it was also truly disturbing. And it's very rare for, I think, you and I to be that disturbed by what we read ever since the disturbed. days of yeah. when you, when someone used to you remember when in college someone would call me on the phone and do anti-german stuff they'd be like Herr von Stegel, hitler's on the phone or they hang up or whatever you know crank call me 
<laughs> and so we left by the phone a copy of Desaad. Uh, Desaad, oh. Marquis Desaad, the, 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 the Sodom. And, uh, and we had, when you were over one day, and they called, and it really happened. I passed the phone to you, and you opened the book at random and started screaming what you read from the Marquis de Sade. About like fucking a cow with the, I don't know, with like a child. Right. And these people never called me. Never back. called back. Never <laughs> living daylight out of me. <laughs> I really have. That's really funny. I forgot about that. But yeah, I used to just read from that randomly all the time. Jesus Christ, what a like aggressive act that was. I used to just pick that thing up. Fifteen whores visit him three by three. One flogs, one sucks him off, another shits, then the one who shat flogs him. The one who sucked him off shits, and the one who flogged him sucks him off. He receives all fifteen in this way. He sees nothing, he hears nothing. He is intoxicated. A bod oversees everything. He has six old women placed in a semicircle. Three young whores flay him in front of this semicircle of duennas who all spit in his face. One whore teases his asshole with a birch handle, a second standing in front of him, flogs him across his thighs and prick. In this way, he comes over the breasts of the flagellatrix in front of him. Two women flay him with bull's pizzles as a third on her knees before him. It is genuinely disturbing, and I really, and I wonder why. Why is which it, the desad? The desad. Why is the desad so fucking disturbing still? It's like there's something. Well, it is almost written from his own psychotic yeah disease you know what i mean it's almost like this disease talking to you but uh but he wrote that on matchbooks or something did you know that that part of the story where like he was in the bastille prison yeah i know that, that, that he, yeah thing. did he write a lot and of it was and he thought it was disappeared but it, it turned up in some erotic collection years later i don't really know like that. this tiny handwritten text that and so that book is really weird i mean i think it's more like a list of just it is, you know, just it's it just, gives me those weird feeling that sometimes Alistair Crowley's. Yeah, you're like, I don't, I don't want to read this because I'm feeling the guy was doing something really nasty while right. he was writing this. There's <laughs> really, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a really like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like kind of yeah. like filthy. You're trying to look like Crowley right now, I guess. I wanted to look like Crowley. Yeah, yeah. I kind of wanted. Yeah. To, I wanted to look you're a little succeeding. Like, I wanted to look. <laughs> I wanted to look a bit like Bezos. <laughs> And crow and Alice Crowley. <laughs> no, you're more crow. I wanted like some kind of. Oh, because you're playing a, a big mogul. Or... I play this big mogul who has like a cult around him, and he's like this kind of occultist, but he has this like. Well, no, he's like a futurist. I write like sci-fi. It's a funny character. Huh? I also huh? thought like I need to have like a signature look. You know, those guys have like a signature thing. Yeah. So I'm gonna have like my stupid little beard, but yeah, I thought the Crowley thing. Dude, this job is just hilarious. I mean, uh, literally two weeks ago, we were shooting on a fucking UFO. The interior of the UFO is all this rusted, metallic ironwork stuff inside of it that looks like Mayan carvings. So the whole idea is it's like the, the ship is like all like, that's where the Mayans got their language from and everything. And it's like, okay. it's amazing. So it has like a theory of UFOs in the show? Yeah, like it suggests yeah. they don't ever talk okay, about it. They don't really go into it. No, they don't go into it. You just see that the ship is covered with Mayan purpose and stuff. <laughs> but, but, but that's Spanish sci-fi. No wonder it, it reaches out to true. the audience. You know? That's true, actually. That's really yeah. true. But I got to fucking read from the Necronomicon in this fucking that is so amazing. and I go mad I go mad when I read the Necronomicon I lose my mind as I'm reading the Necronomicon oh my god the mad Arab Foon Lui Mugulwa Naf Katulu Rili Mua Nagul Fatagum Foon Lui Mugulwa Naf Katulu Rili Mua Nagul Fatagum Oh my God, the mad Arab! Like, and I'm on a UFO, and I was so. What the hell? What happened? I was like, I'd say you come full circle, but that's too circle. much a saucer. Full saucer. Full saucer. It was just. <laughs> I was like, how did this work out like yeah. that? Yeah, it's amazing. You're and, like, there. That's. I think that's proof that, that we are living in a simulation, or not. I don't know. Something. Uh, but yeah, no. It feels like. And it shows that you are going. You, you're not, you are, I think it's a good sign. But of course, I, <laughs> so, I, I don't know. Someone could think it's a bad sign. 
there's something weird about it in like you can inadvertently or unconsciously rel relentlessly reconnect things in your own life in some fucking weird way i'm just like i have literally yeah. some weird, weird way I've done this horrible been in the same pursuit of the same thing since i was like eight years old yeah it's so weird yeah and it's like that's really weird and it's like yeah it just weirds me out and and, and i don't know whether that's a good thing or not because i'm like my i haven't progressed beyond that in any real way like somehow i've create a reality i can live in that has yeah i know what you mean but you i mean you are a special case too because i do think you were a bit of a um, prodigy or something i mean not a prodigy but like a, a little more you were more like your adult self as a kid already that's true as a kid you had a kind of i don't know why you had too this. actually though but i think you were the same thing and i actually maybe 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 now. we brought that out in that's an interesting way of putting it because right and maybe we then no not that your adult self is not a guy who does like you know putting on like costumes every day <laughs> jumping well, around somehow we both because you have a you have a very similar thing it's like i also have not given up on whatever no. i was when i was reading treasure island or something no and like as a kid oh. i saw something there that like you you're talking about now that i've never yes. let go of yeah. never let go of you manifest yeah. manifested some we manifested some future self thing like in some weird loop it's like that's a, yeah yeah it's we, uh, strange really as we get older too I, I i start freaking out just like just that idea that not one of our cells in our body was in our body you know what i mean yeah every cell now is renewed it's no longer your original so like who, what the fuck am i <laughs> you know what are we it's, it's like we're not the cells what are we yeah, it's so well, weird no what are we're like weird oh. we're this weird conscious but now. one thing we are are those books that's what's so weird like that's that's so what that's we big, are that's a big it's problem. more like them moving they us are the continuity. Us. i almost read those books because i'm finding myself now <laughs> literally i mean like i'm reading dick francis again and i'm like oh but yeah I'm reading it with so much more pleasure i <laughs> can't I, wait to re-hit him now more pleasure him that we had when i read them when i was a kid it's like it's yeah and it's weird because it's like but I, those were really good as a kid too they right? were really we good but they seem they were really good they're surprising yeah. really good I, I expected it to be they're actually like surprisingly well done and I'm the like, thing is, they really, and I got this as a kid already, they have this real sense of being from that real subculture of racing, like totally. the lore, you know, it has this real lore sort of, totally. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it has no, this, absolutely. it's almost like Villon, when you read his poetry, he was a real thief, you feel this, it has that reality. Right. It does. Like Dick Francis, it does. it's somehow it better than a lot of shit. No, it really, no, 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 it absolutely does. And it's like you, you, some kind of weird subcultural thing that, that might be a big part of it. Oh my God, we're going to fucking run yeah. out of time again. It's crazy how long we can go on. This, this is a good one. This, this, <laughs> yeah, this is a good thing. We, we have 10 minutes up. Um, All right, perfect. Perfect, actually. This is, there's a lot of weird, yeah. this one. <laughs> yeah, but it's quite light. It's just so random. Actually. But Dick Francis, yeah. I no, remember that show too. That was good. The TV show. But it's also yeah, that was good. But it's also like there's a kind of like the characters are really like the one that I just read. I'm reading one now, and then I, the one I just read before was like there was a whole relationship the guy has with his wife in it that was like really moving. <laughs> and I was, I was kind of like. I did not expect that in reading this thing. Really Single like, tears. Yeah, it was really like, and the end of that book, it was kind of amazing the way it ended because it's like this. Which one? Of, I'll get that one. It's called Forfeit. And it was like, huh. the end of it was just like this wicked, like the relationship <laughs> of the wife and like, and his mistress, he has like a girlfriend in it. And then the whole way it works out, it was just like, wow, it was really heavy in this kind of way. <laughs> I had no idea. And actually- I think I read that as a kid. There's a, I, the weird, name there's a weird depth to them that I didn't expect at all. That I was like, 
Wow. And wasn't there something that he didn't, that his wife really wrote them or something like that? Was there? I don't know. I think well, they I think kept going was, after he died, right? Or, or, somebody or not, kept... Even while he was still alive, that his wife did all the research. Okay. But then there some was something were like, maybe like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people were like, oh, come on, the wife must have written them. Because it is... Well, hard. maybe it was a collaboration, like the Walus. Or yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, maybe. But because there's some kind... I'm like... Really, this fucking dude who was a jockey was like writing these yeah. kind of deep books like this. And I mean, I guess I shouldn't be. Surprised. But I mean, Shakespeare was an actor, or the, you know what I mean. So and exactly. so, Dion was a thief. Is, that's what it's so good about. Well, it's true. It's true. Dick Francis. Yeah, no, it's absolutely true. It's really cool to think this guy was a fucking jockey. Yeah, like actually, cool. I know a young uh, jockey here. A, a student of my wife's is a, a jockey and an artist. And she, um, I told her to check out Dick Francis. And now she's reading everyone. She's like, these are the greatest books. I've I ever bet she fucking she loves, loves them. I would bet for a, for a person who knows about horses or racing. Yeah, or yeah, jockey, yeah, yeah, yeah. They would be amazing. Yeah. Sure. It's like. Even more. Yeah, yeah. Even more so. I'm sure you get so much more out of them. It's cool because he doesn't explain a lot of the racing shit. It's just kind of there. And you yeah. kind of. A little bit, but it, which is cool because you sort of you get it and you and you don't yeah you, you do know it will enhance it, but it you learn after a few books like what a trainer is, what a thing you know if you don't really know how yeah. all the different. No, I was rules. really surprised at how unbelievably fucking and ever and then I was reading about it and all these people were like, well, of course he wasn't a good writer or anything, and I'm like, but he was actually. I actually think he's a good writer. That's the thing we say about Philip K. Dick, too. You're like, yeah, I'm like, but uh, he's a good writer. You're not a good writer if you say that. Of it yeah, you. I don't understand that when people say that. Or like people will talk about John B. McDonald, too, and be like, he's not a good writer. I'm like, but he is a good writer. I'm like, uh, I mean, well, I think, I, it makes no I think sense. He's a good writer, right? I mean, it's like, I think he's great. I got to tell you, I, I'm reading a John Grisham. Oh, I, no. You know, I'm reading Wait. John Grisham. I'm reading Grisham. He's the law. He's okay. the legal thriller guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, but there's he's not the Bill Clinton guy. <laughs> okay, because yeah, I've read both of works by both. That's James. <laughs> I used to work for Ballantine Books when they published that, and I had to do back matter or something. He decided that's James Patterson. Well, this is a whole other thing we we'll talk about sometime. These guys. I read Patterson. I yeah, Clara read Patterson when I, she was younger. Yeah, and she was really into him. But um, I, I mean, about? yeah, they're this legal, vi the legal uh, well, I, uh, I like genre. That. It's it's yeah, a I weird, legal thing. It's weird, but almost like porn of legal. Yeah, it's just I so like legal. That. It's just well, you know, I like that, like courtroom shit, like that. You love the? Uh, don't you go to the yeah. English courts when you're yeah. in London? Just, watch just it? yeah, go to the murder trials at the Old Bailey. But the Grisham books are really pretty good. I mean, they're really, I they're, they're super well done. I mean, I'm surprised. But I mean, um, Rumpel of the Bailey, those are great. That's both. Those, those are great. Those stories. Those are really good. But I was just going to tell you that I don't think I've ever told you this, but Clara, my girlfriend, she, when she was growing up, she read Piers Anthony books, the Xanth books. You know those fucking science fiction books? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are, a thousand those are, are they dragon? Sort of, yeah. like fantasy, oh, yeah, yeah. a little bit sort oh, yeah. of, but it's always funny. Oh, yeah. She like, read the whole series? She read like all of those things. And I'm always, she was like, they're like weird, like porn too. She was like, they're here. Oh, really? really? I'm like, not surprised. She was like, they're sexually really weird. But it's just so funny to me because it's like those Robert Jordan books, which are like, somebody must read those things. But like, I have a huge known. amount, but I think Jordan has more fans today now. I don't... I don't know. And they, yeah, of course people read it. Now they're making a TV show out of it, but I've never known a single person that's read a Robert Jordan. No, I don't think Not I have. Until meeting Clara, yeah, I've never met a single person that read a Pierce <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> that's such bullshit. <laughs> what about Andre Norton? I've read a bunch of those. I've read See, but, but there's who's, one of those people. But who wrote The Ship Who Sings? That was so good, man. She but did. Caffrey. That, that's that, that's that oh, Anne Caffrey. She did some dragon books, right? You did those Dragons of Pern books. Yeah. Stuff, which I've never I read. haven't read those, but Ship Who Sang is so good. It made me want to read those. Really? I've never that, yeah, that, it's really that good. book? Yeah, is it's it? really good. I'll yeah. read it. Okay. Then I'll then I'll read that. I'm I'm getting more interested in like fantasy, which I've never been that into. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, but those Robert Jordan books, it's insane to me because it's literally like they're all like so was, is that the wheel of time? Yeah. But but I don't understand how a guy like that, does he never stop writing? Is he just constantly writing? 
to I guess. these things that are like, I mean, he's written like thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of this stuff. Yeah. How? How does he do it? I don't know. You know. How does he do I it? mean, it's probably just like two hours a day, just every day, you know? Think about P.G. Woodhouse. Till he's 90s, he was knocking out those novels. My God. Him, I sort of get, and I can picture him like... That's true, because he's getting so much fun from it, too. He's laughing. Yeah, I can picture him sort of like finishing one and then taking some time at least. But these other guys, I'm like, they just must not stop. They just run together. Yeah. yeah I haven't followed him, so I don't know what he's done. Robert Jordan. It's just like, but now, yeah, I think they're making us, they've made a series, I think. Out of, but I think they're going to try to make a series out of anything they fucking can. Now. We got like two and a half minutes left. No, we're just like, yeah, man. Well, this was, this was awesome. I'm going to try and get myself like a fucking oh. There's a badass hamburger place nearby me. Nice. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna have lunch. But um, fuck, we didn't. We never got on to um, when you were reading hard sci-fi, like at Heinlein and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. Off and okay. Let's yeah, do yeah, yeah, yeah. No. All right. Yeah. We're about to get kicked All off. Right, my brother. All right, man. Great to see you. I've seen you, man. I'm have a great you. burger. Yeah, right. That was, is amazing, by the way. That hat is. Oh great. yeah. yeah. That's my so favorite. That's one of my favorite me. albums of his. I love that album. I know, me too. It is my favorite product. I mean, I'm just not in. Okay, Desire is so great, but you're not gonna. It's just cornball to listen to it at this point. You know? At this point, but this I, is still interesting. This yeah, thing. that you album. You listen to that album, you're like, what is this fucking album? Dude, <laughs> insane, insane. Yeah, that album is amazing. It's so. It's fucking angry and like evil kind of and like no it's a breakdown of bob dylan yeah, it it's really like because yeah it's when his the first time his life went downhill after yeah. his movie failed yeah it's like his, his marriage broke up yeah, yeah. Just anger in it all right see you man. Matthews shot himself loudly and messily in the center of the parade ring at Dunstable Races. Now, I was standing only six feet away from him, but he did it so quickly that had it been only six inches, I would not have had time to stop him. He had walked out of the changing room ahead of me, his narrow shoulders hunched inside the khaki jerkin he had put on over his racing collars and his head down on his chest as if he were deep in the...